Did you know that food seals a covenant? Hello, lovies, and welcome back to Thy Kingdom Come, Matthew 6 and 33. Lovies, if you're new to my channel, go ahead and take this time to click on that subscribe button and the bell so that you can be notified of future uploads. But lovies, did you all know that food seals a covenant? Have you ever thought about why when a person gets married and they have a reception and they invite you to the reception and they feed you? Well, what they're doing is sealing the covenant of their marriage with the special guests that they invited. Lovies, food seals the covenant. Think about it. But lovies, the Bible tells us that we should not eat from the table of devils. Because once you eat with someone, you become one with them. A meal makes you one. Be careful who you eat with. It's a spiritual principle and people aren't aware of it. I was just sitting listening to my mentee, Dr. Miles Monroe, message on how food seals a covenant. And he said the reason why the food seals the covenant is because when you think about it, someone had to go to work for that food. They had to use their energy. They had to use their sweat, their strength and all of their might to work. And then they would take and go and buy bread and drink. So that bread and drink represents their flesh and blood. So when you eat with someone, you're actually eating their body and their blood. Lovies, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20 and 21. I like to reference things back to the Bible. Okay, verse 20 reads, But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. I'm going to skip down to verse 27 and 28. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and ye be disposed to go whatsoever is set before you eat asking no questions for conscience sake 28 but if any man say unto you this is offered in sacrifice unto idols eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in other words, lovies, what Jesus was saying there is that we know in life we're going to be around people who do not eat from the Lord's table. But say, for instance, you may have an office gathering. And in that case, you know that everybody in your office does not eat from the Lord's table nine times out of ten. But as long as they are not offering whatever food that they are providing unto idols or devils, then it is okay to eat it simply because everything on this earth belongs to God. And it's okay to eat it as long as it is not being offered unto idols. So, you know, in life, we're going to have some people that will take things all out of context. And I, I'm glad that Jesus went ahead and clarified that because, you know, you're going to have some holy rollers. We're going to be like, oh, I can't eat at the table. They don't even they don't even serve the Lord. I can't eat with them. I can't break bread with them. I can't share my food with them. He clarified it. As long as it's not being offered unto devils, it's OK to partake of it. But if they say this is being offered unto idols, unto the devil, then you get up, you shake the dust off and you keep it moving. But lovies, you have to be careful of who you're eating with. Okay, lovies, I want to clarify some things concerning flesh and blood. In John chapter 6 and verse 54 through 56, I'm going to read. John chapter 6 verse 54 reads, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. 55, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh, 56, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. Now, let's clarify flesh and blood. 
He said that the flesh is meat indeed. And he said, my blood is drink indeed. So we know that physically we cannot eat Jesus' flesh nor drink his blood. We know that Jesus spoke in parables, so he had to have been speaking metaphorically. But think about it. He gave his body as a sacrifice for us on Calvary. And then he shed his blood as a sacrifice to redeem mankind. Jesus said, my flesh is meat. And we know that meat equals food. And the only way that we can partake of Jesus' food is through his word. He is referred to as the bread of life. And his word is symbolically known as bread. So it is only through abiding according to his will and his word that we can have eternal life. For his word gives us life that is eternal. Lovies, so food seals a covenant. The covenant of marriage should be to abide by and to obey what thus said the Lord, according to the word of God. So lovies, it's important to know that the next time you're invited to a wedding and you eat their food, you are in fact saying, I'm going to fulfill my part of this covenant to assist you in your marriage according to the word of God and his will concerning marriage. A marriage covenant defined in the kingdom of God. But lovey, it's time to go. I love you guys and I want you all to know that I'm always praying for you. And you know what my main prayer is, is that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and your Lord, you will make him your personal Savior and your Lord today and come on into the kingdom of God and begin to activate and demonstrate the kingdom of God that is within you. Luke chapter 17 verses 20 and 21.